My name is James Renwick. I'm the Training and Development Manager here at the Johnstone Orion Group Training Center. You're about to watch a video on the A2L refrigerant changes that are coming in early 2024. As most of you probably know, regulations like this tend to come out in drips and drabs and sometimes even change right up to and sometimes even after the regulations take effect. As of March 30th, 2023, the information you're about to see is accurate. But, like I said, it might change. If you folks out there have questions or find out new information, please email me personally at james.renwick at johnstonesupply.com. And if you want to make sure you're getting these emails and videos in a timely manner, go ahead and click on the QR code. That'll get you subscribed to our Training Center newsletter. Now, on to Eric Dillon, our master trainer, with the A2L information. Hi, my name is Eric Dillon. I'm the senior instructor at the Johnstone Supply Training Center here in Fresno. First, we're going to discuss a little bit about the history of refrigerants and how we got to where we are and the, the A2L requirements. Most of you know, this started with the Montreal Protocol. It was an international treaty that was signed back in the 80s, came into effect in 1989. What most of you may not know is that the Montreal Protocol has been revised nine times. The latest of those was in 2019 and it was called the Kigali Agreement. Uh, it came into effect in 2019 and it's really the driving force on the A2L switchover. The Kigali Agreement has been ratified by over 90 countries. Surprisingly, the U.S. is not one of them. We do, however, have several states that have implemented their own programs and their own legislation that is uh, bringing the Kigali Agreement to life within the U.S. California is one of them. The California Air Resources Board uh, has a much more aggressive schedule than the Kigali Agreement required. Then, in late 2021, the EPA issued a set of rules based on the AIM Act, which uh, is bringing the Kigali Agreement to the U.S. at a federal level slowly. Uh, this is going to include a 85% phase down of HFC refrigerants ending in 2035. However, the California Air Resources Board has issued a much more aggressive schedule, and we're going to talk a little bit about that a little bit later. So what exactly is an A2L refrigerant? The most important thing we want to remember about A2Ls is that they are not compatible with A1s, such as R22 and 410A. They're going to be using different components, and so we're going to see some different manufacturing as uh, we move forward into this. The air conditioning industry will be switching over to either R454B or R32. Both are classified as A2L refrigerants. ASHRAE Standard 34 sets forth the safety classification schedule for refrigerants. The letter A means it is lower toxicity versus B, which is a higher toxicity. The numbers 1, 2L, 2, and 3 are the flammability ratings in order, 1 being the lowest, 3 being the highest. The 2L rating is defined as slightly flammable, moderately flammable, or mildly flammable, depending on the source of the information. We have been predominantly using A1 refrigerants that are designated as having no flame propagation or are very difficult to ignite. We all know that changes once it's mixed with a little compressor oil, but that's not the determining factor for the purposes of standard 34. We have A3 refrigerants already in use in self-contained refrigerators, mostly R600, which is isobutane, but also some R290, which is propane. A2Ls and A3s are considered safe to use predominantly due to the very small charge, as little as four ounces or less for a household refrigerator. The dissipation rate of a small charge like this makes it extremely unlikely it will find an ignition source while it is still concentrated enough to be flammable. Close to 70 million systems worldwide are already using A2Ls successfully. The U.S. is just a little behind on this one. 